Hej. So what was like for you coming out whilst you were working for the police? Initially, when I first joined the police, I was really conscious of my gender more than anything, I think. I didn't really think about my uh, orientation or identity. I thought more about being a, a woman in a, in a man's world. I wasn't really out or open for the first few years in the police. Didn't feel like I could be, if I'm honest. Mm. Um, and then I kind of just became more aware of other people like me and, and, and of the support that was available as well. Um, you know, like other networks, like, the, the, you know, we have a lot of kind of support mechanisms in the police service, and I became aware of that. But yeah, I went into investigations and uh, and I just felt like I found my place. That kind of the little girl detective then was becoming the, you know, the big girl detective. Yeah. And I felt like, how can I expect someone to be honest with me about what's happening to them if I'm not being honest with who, you know, with who I am? Do you think there's anything that gives you an edge over your male counterparts? From a personal point of view, I think being a female from a black minority ethnic background and having kids, I think that makes me quite unique and I'm quite proud of the opportunities I have to do things that can potentially open doors for other people to see that actually you being somebody unique can have a really big voice in somewhere like policing. And if you are new coming in and you want to see those women in those managerial positions, you want to see them high ranking and think, actually, I could get there. It isn't just all men at the top. So what's your most favourite part of the job? <laughs> Strangely enough, just being able to communicate with different people. Communication, you know, is what we use to, to solve things. Being a police officer teaches you how to accept that people are different, that they live their lives differently. You get to share moments with complete strangers that blow your mind. Um, you get to do things in special ways for people that, you know, will literally, they'll come back and tell you that you changed their life for the better. Did you always want to be a detective? Yes, I think I always did. Um... I kind of knew that was where I wanted my career to go. Getting an investigation, getting a case and really picking it apart, who's done what and who's involved and why and not knowing really what you could be going to. You could come into work one day and think, right, this is what I'm doing today. This is what I need to do. This is my to-do list. And then something happens and you're going. doesn't matter what you've planned um, and you have to switch into that mode and deal with that. And, um, you know, there's not many jobs really where it is like that and that's what keeps it fresh even for like 15 years in the job. How would you describe that feeling of when you did like finally come out? Like how was it? Oh, I, I became a better police officer. I, be I felt like the police got more from me because mm. I wasn't hiding anything. I was, I was in an organisation where it's about truth and honesty and you know, I was going to gay clubs and hiding if the police came in, mm. you know, I, it was just so at work. So you like a double life oh, was, much, yeah, yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely I did. Um, and I, uh, now, I can't imagine it. I can't ever imagine it. It's helped me professionally as well. People I get victims of crime coming out to me, telling me things about themselves because they identify something in me. Yeah. Um, it's almost having like another little skill set as well, you know, so. Have you seen more black police officers join them? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We are in areas that we wouldn't have been before. Firearms, you know, detectives, and we are in these roles and we are excellent at everything. You don't really see black police officers with dreads. There's loads of black officers with dreads. Oh, really? Yeah, man. What, like, long uniformed or...? Down to, yeah, really? long down to their back dreads. Wow. Yeah, yeah. OK. When I was 16, at, at, at that age, I don't feel like I would fit in because I felt I don't feel like I was masculine enough in order to be a police officer. Mm. Um, so again, like I said, at that age, especially that age, seeing someone like myself would have made me, maybe I would have taken a different path. But I think it's really interesting that you feel like as a young lad and you're kind of, you know, you, you, you've got your identity and who you are and you're thinking, I need to fit to be in the police. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe where we need to listen to that and go, why are people feeling they need to fit? This isn't about, I, I've been in the police 24 years. I don't feel like I fit. I don't want to fit. I want to bring me to the table and say, listen, these are the skills I've got and this is what I'm good at. So, being a black police officer, what do you think about the whole BLM movement? It pains me that, you know, I had to see somebody that is me lose their life again for the vehicle to start up again. And I just think that we need to keep the pace, that conversations like this are giving us seats at tables that we should have been sitting at a long time ago. Um, and I am just... 
aware that we need to make sure that the correct voices are sat at these tables. So I got stopped and searched a lot. Yeah. Just, you know, another black guy looking suspicious, I guess. Yeah. I've been told that I fit the description of, you know, a recent robbery and I was wearing dark clothing. I wear dark hoodies all the time. Yeah. You know, it, w w why? Why have you stopped me? Now I have the knowledge. So I ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Personally believe that stop and search is a good tool to be used in the right way. But at the same time, we have been stopped and searched unnecessarily. I have been stopped and searched unnecessarily. I don't want my children nor their children after them to be concerned about that. I want them to drive past, you know, a police car. Ah, oh, there's a brother in there, there's a sister in there. It will be natural to see ourselves in these roles. It will be natural to see high-ranking police officers who can affect change, but it can't be done from outside. It has to be done from inside. We need people like you so that we don't have to feel uncomfortable. Do you find it difficult juggling being a mother and being in the police as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, my husband's in the police as well, so for... And we've got three children, so for quite a few years we have had to be on opposite shifts and literally, you know, passing ships in the night at, at, at times. But the police is good for... There are opportunities to do flexible working. Um, they do recognise that obviously most people are going to have children or other sort of caring responsibilities. So there are things in place to make it easier, but, yeah, it is... It is hard. Do you ever feel a little bit like you're a detective mum? So finding out, OK, who's done what? <laughs> yes, without a doubt. Um, I do find myself questioning my children in an interview technique style at times. <laughs> I can actually see, like, an interview process going around in my head, and I'm like, these are my kids. But to be honest, it works. So I'm going to probably carry on with that. <laughs> it's great training. <laughs> yeah, good training, yeah. <laughs>